What's up guys, welcome back. So I'm really excited to share these thoughts with you. Um, I believe that, you know, they will help benefit your life in many ways. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna actually show you how you can experience what I'm talking about very, very simply. And so to begin this, there's this ingenious quote by Marcus Aurelius, the famous Roman emperor. Now this guy was a stoic badass. Like you've probably read meditations, you've probably seen his quotes all over Instagram. But I believe that this quote in particular dives deep into what it means to be a man, what masculinity feels like, and, and just uh, that masculine core, your masculine core. The quote goes like this, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. So it's so true if you think about it, you don't have power over anything else. As we're children and we grow up, we learn very quickly that, you know, if a girl doesn't like you, you can't really, you can't, the more that you beg and try to persuade her to like you, it seems like she just runs further from you. It's like going to try to pet a cat. You ever try to pet a cat? It's like, sometimes the cat doesn't want to be pet. Sometimes it wants your love and affection. A dog will always love you. A dog is a man's best friend because it's going to always like, you can be having a shitty hair day and wake up and depressed, the dog's right there. A cat, it's like it does its own thing. It's a lot like uh, everything in life, right? You only have control over you. You have to take responsibility and make things happen. Now, there's a lot of chaos in the world. And so by understanding that you yourself have power over yourself, this is your masculine core. Okay, let's dive a little deeper. In the great book, by Robert Greene, it's called Mastery. And in the beginning of this book, he talks about that humans evolved to be masters. We, we can become so excellent at something. And it started when we were creating tools. Now we have eyes in front of our head and prey has usually cattle. There are uh, field animals that roam, you know, the landscape and they graze on grass. Now cattle has eyes on the side of its head. And by having eyes on the side of your head, it lets you scan the environment for predators. Predators, on the other hand, look at a lion, look at a tiger, eyes on the front, eyes to the front, monkeys, eyes to the front. Now what this lets you do is focus. You're not always scanning the horizon. You're able to focus in and dive deep into the thing that you're looking at and you're able to create, you're able to mold, you're able to build. And so by having eyes in front of our face, I mean, that's how we evolved guys. That right there is a key ingredient into what makes us human and recognizing this identity that we all have. Now it's, when I say masculine core, it's a feeling that you get inside of your body. Now, I think a lot of us are focused on techniques. If we're going out and we're trying to pick up girls or we're trying to get someone to like us or just in how we live our life, there's usually a lot of thoughts that are going on inside of our head. And it's almost like these things are penetrating this barrier. And there actually is like this unseen barrier. We can call this your frame. Every person has a frame, okay? And, and there is like things, say you like watch the news. The news, you are now being, uh, you're giving yourself permission to be influenced by the words and by the images that are coming into your eyes from the television, okay? And this all penetrates your frame. When you get pulled over by a police, he has a frame you have a frame. You're going 90 down the speedway and you see the lights, woo woo. And he pulls you over and he rolls, he tells you to roll down the window. His frame is so much stronger than you. You are susceptible to his influence. You can't really do anything but plead and try to make the best case that you can. And so he, you know, he has all this authority frame. He's dressed in a, in a, an uh, officer of the law outfit. There's a gun on his hip. 
I mean, his frame is just so strong. So your frame can be affected by many things. Someone says a, like a mean comment, maybe, you know, you read a mean YouTube comment or a funny one and that, that like hits you, it goes through your frame and it makes you react. Okay. Many people do not understand they have weak frames and they become very reactive, very responsive to all the little things that are going on inside of life. And so they get so chaotic within their head. It's like a wild jungle. That's part of the reason why Jordan Peter says, clean your room. Because the direct environment that you live in is sort of a landscape, uh, like a same kind of thing that's going on inside of your head. And so if you live your life like this, you're not in your masculine core. Okay, if, you, if you're constantly filled with anxiety and stress, you're living in a chaotic, stressful, cortisol, hormone rising state. And this does not make you someone that is at peace, that is calm. This does not make you, you know, someone that people can depend on. I love how Jordan Peterson says that, you know, if, if you have any goal, think about becoming the man that you could go to your father's funeral, go to your mother's funeral, and people could rely on you as their rock. People could cry on your shoulder and you would be a strong foundation for them. Maybe your brothers and siblings, maybe your friends, other family. Make that your goal. You know, make that your goal to be a solid rock. See, all of you have that inside of you. You have, you're a man, you're a, you have this masculine core. And so how does this feel? Let me, let me just go even deeper. How does this feel? Here's a little story. Imagine if you've ever read a fantasy book, Lord of the Rings, I notice a common theme that comes up in fictional um, stories is that there's usually a kingdom that's in turmoil. And maybe there's a wise king and he gets assassinated. And the, the kingdom was at once a peaceful, prosperous place. He gets assassinated and now you have these new influencers coming in. You have maybe the queen that is trying to poison her husband and she's giving rule to the kingdom and you see it crumbling. You see a lot of chaos within the kingdom. But there's always a hero usually that is trying to restore and bring order back to the kingdom and he has to, you know, weed through all the, the nonsense and the politics of the court. And see, we're the heroes of our journey. I think a very part of growing up is the boyhood to manhood transition is you're the hero of your journey trying to restore order to the kingdom. The kingdom's in turmoil. And that's why many tribes, maybe years ago, there was a sort of trial of fire. You actually had to do something to prove your manhood. And that was usually painful. It was a hunt. It was a, it was a, like, like maybe sticking your hand in a glove that's filled with ants and it, it just bites you or you get like a massive tattoo, like something involving pain and, and, uh, that, that shatters that like boyhood. It, it actually takes the order and it scatters it all around. And now you have to bring back the order. You have to learn to piece it back together. That's the hero's journey. That's when a boy becomes a man. When you lose your parents, when you move out of your house, when you deal with trial and tribulation, you have to figure out how to live life. So the best way to do that is by having a calm, peaceful kingdom. You restored order. You brought back a, a feeling inside of you that is like now your strong frame. Think about this. Really think about how it feels to enjoy yourself standing there. What do you enjoy when you are waking up in the morning? <laughs> when you are walking down the street, when you're working out, when you're doing the dishes, are you there? Are you there, man? Are you guys living in life? Are you in the flow of life? This is masculine energy. It's consciousness. 
the person, the human being with two eyes in front of its head, a single conscious point of reference in the universe. Right there, consciousness, presence, masculine energy. Right? What's the opposite of masculine energy? Feminine energy, the yin and the yang. Nature is very chaos. We have tornadoes, earthquakes, unpredictable. And what stands strong? The man, the masculine energy. Okay? It's, it's like a rock. It's like, it's, and that's back to the story of the kingdom. If you have a strong kingdom and you let all of these people come in and cause disorder, and then eventually it becomes corrupt and no one stands up for what is right. No one reinforces the original laws of the land. And so then years pass by and it crumbles down until you have that person, that man, and you are that man to bring back the law, to bring and restore the order and that masculine center that you have. This is very attractive. This is like what people want to be around. They feel that you are present, that you can listen to them, that you are caring. And this is not so rigid as like, you know, you never laugh and you don't have fun, but it's just at the center. It's when you are, when you are doing what you want, when you are living life on your terms and you're not affected by everyone else's opinion, by what everyone thinks about you. If you get rejected, it doesn't penetrate that frame. You're not letting all of this stuff influence how you're going to be. And so to wrap this video up, the way that you guys can experience this almost immediately is by going for a walk for about one hour. And as you're walking, you'll notice that we have a tendency to scan the horizon. But remember, we're not prey. We are at the top of the food chain. We are the predators. We're human beings. That lets us focus. That lets us be present. And so you can focus on the sidewalk ahead. Now, one key giveaway of someone that's uh, experiencing a lot of anxiety is that their eyes continue to shift side to side, right? Maybe you chew gum, you're all over the place. We've seen people like this. We have a tendency to do this when we go out, when we're in a social environment. You'll scan constantly and we're looking, we're like looking for something. This is actually very unattractive because it shows like the outside world, the people that are seeing us, that what's wrong? Why isn't he enjoying himself? Why isn't he enjoying, if you're with friends, why are you not enjoying the friends? It's okay to make eye contact because then again, you're, you're using that focus and then eye contact is showing that you are building something. There's a connection there. It forms the connection, the gateway to the soul. But see, when we scan, we're, we're giving ourselves away as we're looking for something more than what we have here. See, but the masculine is abundant. The masculine is calm and present. See what I'm getting at here? So as you walk, you walk and you walk with your head leveled. If you've ever seen a depressed person, what's the head usually look like? Down, closed, shoulders hunched. The confident man, upright, not scanning. Loose, loose. Keep this in mind, loose body language. This is the key thing I want you guys to go. Go for a walk. And as you walk, breathe. And then after about an hour, which correlates to about 10,000 steps, depending on your pace, go onto the main street and see if you can continue to walk with the same swagger or the same organicness that you would have if you were walking in a secluded, isolated wilderness. Now there's other eyes. Now there's other people that could judge you. But is this really a threat? And so walk down the main street and continue to walk with your head up. It doesn't have to be like this, just level. Looking forward, calm, relaxed. Now, after an hour of walking, you're gonna be pretty relaxed. And your step will, you're walking. Do you 
Now when a car passes, and if it's a heavy traffic area when the car passes, do you feel like tension? Maybe your arm, sort of. Maybe you, you get a little tight and you feel like, you know, you gotta put your head down. Do your eyes go down for just a split second? Do you feel like you need to look into every car's window? What does this girl look like? What does this man look like? What kind of, what's he thinking? Is he looking at me? Are you walking on the street in your masculine energy? That's it, guys. You can experiment with that and you can feel it right away. And you can begin to practice that, not only by walking, but by bringing this awareness to your life. Remember the frame, because we all have the frame. You can do meditation. And uh, you know, there's a lot more from here, but this is just such a fundamental key part of being a man. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.